I want to watch this. Notoriously hate award shows, and celebrities hate when comedians host them because the comedians can't resist the opportunity to get on stage and belittle celebrities during their night of highest honor. But the fans Chat. love these the spectacles because we get to sit back and watch the chaos. Relax, I'm going to try and be nice. Your global megastars with amazing talent, most of you. A few of you just married well. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> We, we all do. We all do. Today we are going to take a look at some of the funniest, nice, most Kira savage, Lusa. and painfully awkward moments that have come from comedians at award shows. Starting with Jerry Seinfeld, who exposed these ceremonies for what they truly are. Comedy legend Jerry Seinfeld recently explained his hatred for award shows while he accepted the Comedian Award presented by HBO in 2007. You don't give awards to comedians. <laughs> First of all, comedians don't need awards. Awards are for people that are looking for work. We're not looking for work. Jerry opens with an interesting point. Comedians will not sell more tickets to their stand-up performances based on some pretentious award because being funny is subjective. However, in cinema, Wrong. receiving an accolade will make producers and directors more interested in hiring an award-winning actor in future films for obvious creative and marketing reasons. You know, I don't know why we're so fascinated with actors in this- oh, Guys, because it's a selling point, okay? It would, guys, guys, if you're, if you're, if you have a movie, okay, it's like, ah, uh, do I want to go there or not, dude? And it says, award winning, fucking Oscar winning, and you have a massive title, some award. Guys, it's a selling point. It is what it is. Culture, like, they haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo, mini brains. Why? We must honor this man. Why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. <laughs> Playing dress up and pretend is not genius, ladies and gentlemen. It's not genius. <laughs> Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready, say what we told you to say. <laughs> Fantastic. He did it. Give this man a huge golden trophy. He's a goddamn genius. As an actor himself, I'm sure Jerry is just joking here. However, comedians are often writers, directors, producers, and performers of their own material. Ironically, it kind of makes them more deserving of these esteemed awards. And secondly, and even more important, is... Um, your whole career as a comedian is about making fun of pretentious, high-minded, self-congratulatory BS events like this one. <laughs> the whole feeling in this room of reverence and honor. Chat, it's kind of a, I guess I hate to be this guy to say hey, ironic. It's kind of ironic this guy wrote this entire thing about being pretentious because he knew he was going to win the award. That's just kind of pretentious. Honoring is the exact opposite of everything I have wanted my life to be about. Now him clearly expressing disdain for these ceremonies is, might though. come as a surprise to you, but comedians before and after him have felt the exact same hatred. Like Don Rickles, oh, he's he paved the it. way for comedians after him to unapologetically say what's on their mind. I have a dent in my head. I'm so excited to get this cockamamie award. While you may think it's disrespectful to just make fun of an award you're being honored for, it's hard to take it seriously when there are so many award shows that you can't even keep track of them. You have the Golden Globes, the Emmys, the Grammys, Directors Guild of America Awards, what? the BAFTA Awards, Screen Actors Guild Awards, Producers Guild of America Awards, Writers Guild of America Awards, the Oscars, MTV Video Music Awards, BET Awards, American Music Awards, and that's not even all of them. These Wait, people spend more time celebrating is, uh... than they do creating. I get this wonderful TV Land Award and uh, <laughs> whoever designed it is no? a moron. Now I'm sure you all know the typical structure of these events. One person will be the host of the entire night, but different celebrities will take the stage to present each award. Usually these celebs read their lines off teleprompters, and often they are reading bad jokes that someone else wrote with terrible delivery. We oh. present the VMA to the best group, and we love everything that has to do with groups. Yeah. Group therapy, group hugs, groupies. Very exciting for both of us because we're both nominated. Uh, actually, James, I'm not nominated tonight. Oh, come on, Ann, don't be so modest. <laughs> no, I'm not modest. I'm just not nominated. It used to be, you get naked, you get nominated. Not anymore. Not anymore which made Don's subtle jab about reading from the teleprompter that much yeah, that's funnier. Just bad. Let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. Don then goes on to sarcastically laugh at the jokes. First, it's a thrill to be matched up at the Emmy Awards with Mr. Warp himself, Don Rickles. The world hasn't seen a pairing like this 
since John McCain and Sarah Palin. <laughs> <laughs> It's the deep layers of irony that make Don's delivery so good. These celebrities know award shows are pompous. They also know Don isn't afraid to call them out on their bullshit. Yet even the... before he can get the jokes out, they already laugh and applaud the comic legend. But don't you dare try to interrupt one of his punchlines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach, you know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway, uh, I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. <laughs> Closer than two blocks. You have no lines, Julia. Just not. <laughs> anyway, uh. and even if the entire ceremony is dedicated oh, to one person, know, like when Martin Scorsese received a tribute for the AFI Life Achievement Award, Don Rickles will humble them. Marty, you are the most annoying director I ever had. In my <laughs> Little guy. He's the kind of guy in prison was the squealer all the time, <laughs> pulling on your pants like going, "Let's do it again, Marty." Oh, when what? we see all the films you did, none of Marty. them. <laughs> but if you feel bad for Martin, don't worry. Clint Eastwood got the same treatment the previous year. Clint, I say it, nobody else has said it, and I say it from my heart. You're a lousy actor. <laughs> This is why you can never get too comfortable at these gatherings. Like when David Mann was presenting at the Neighborhood Awards and Lavelle Crawford caught a stray fat joke. Anybody got some chicken, an extra piece of chicken? Lavelle, I know you got some. <laughs> hey, take your jacket off and cover that side of the audience up. I think we can all agree that the best Jack, moments is that you was directly sniping one of the members of the audience. It's a big year for Jack. He also got in a hot tub with Kathy Bates. But hey, who hasn't? One of the most savage this roasts guy. came from Amy Poehler at the 2013 Golden Globes. She introduced director Catherine Bigelow, who was previously married to famous director James Cameron. Catherine was nominated for Best Director for the film Zero Dark Thirty, which received a ton of criticism for glorifying CIA torture in the film. I haven't really been following the controversy over Zero Dark Thirty, but when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. Come on now. Amy has built herself a reputation for kind of being a roast master. Yes, Matt Damon is here for Behind the Candelabra. Where are you, Matt? <laughs> Matt, on any other night in any other room, you would be a big deal. But tonight, and don't take this the wrong way, you're basically a garbage person. <laughs> oh, and Tina Fey is damn good, too. Gravity is nominated for Best Film. I like my day night. George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. <laughs> But sometimes making jokes about celebrities doesn't always go over well. Like the time Sarah Jesus. Silverman made fun of Britney Spears' children at the 2007 VMAs. But have you seen Britney's kids? Oh my god. They are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see. They are so cute. They're, they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. I'm, what? I'm serious. They're this cute, you guys. The audience didn't think this joke was very funny, but this was back in 2007 when the internet didn't have a full force grip on everyone's lives, so nobody was tweeting their outrage against Sarah. That was not the case for Bill Burr, who made a bunch of jokes at the 2021 Grammys pre-show that caused uproar online. After a beautiful piano solo from Igor Levitt, Bill was brought on stage and said this. Uh -oh. How are you? Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? <laughs> Critics exploded online, <laughs> scolding Bill for making such a distasteful joke during a night of honor and praise. Little did critics know, it was only going to get worse. Uh, Bill I mean, immediately followed up by making fun of the Grammys pre-show as he thought he was going to be hosting the actual Grammys, only for him to show up to an empty Hollywood set presenting awards to a handful of producers and a few thousand people watching on the internet. I bought a suit for this! I thought I was gonna be on TV! I'm such a moron! 
I am losing so much money right now. For some reason, they had Bill, a white man from Boston with absolutely no musical talent or knowledge. That's present funny, all though. The Latin Music Awards and nominees. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this cis white male doing all this <laughs> Latino stuff? And he unsurprisingly butchered just about every name. I can't say this name. Natalie, Natalie, what? All right. Uh, <laughs> and the winner, uh, the Grammy goes to... Natalia Lafourque. <laughs> and the Grammy goes to Gustavo Dudamel, conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I will be accepting the Grammy on behalf of Gustavo Dudamel. Congratulations. Crush that one. And the Grammy goes to Frederick <laughs> Valentine. Uh, Angel Blue, Dead Sea Graves. Because of people's outrage, some comedians don't think it's worth it to host anymore. Like Kevin Hart, who decided to drop out of hosting the Academy Awards after he was attacked on Twitter for his unsavory humor. Kevin Hart was announced to be the host of the 2019 Oscars. And, and immediately Bill, gonna, Twitter bro, erupted, gonna kill that. detractors posted a series of old homophobic tweets. Nearly all of them were just really bad jokes that seem relatively menial. However, one stood out more than most. Kevin Hart tweeted, Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, Stop, that's gay. Critics also resurfaced an old joke from his iconic 2010 comedy special, Seriously Funny. I'm gonna tell you guys one of my biggest fears. One of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay. Hey, stop, that's gay. It's quick. <laughs> Kevin had apologized for these previous words in 2012. In 2015, he also addressed using gay jokes in his film, Get Hard. Did you think this is mildly mean-spirited or at the very least a little bit dated? I said to myself, this is funny. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the day, funny is funny regardless of what area it's coming from. Within 48 hours of the host announcement, yeah. Kevin Why did I laugh? Was given it. I didn't laugh, I didn't think it was funny, right? But if it was funny, because of it being like dark or like date or whatever, I'm not gonna fucking withhold that. It's just fucking weird. It, it just it just wasn't funny, which is it doesn't have to do it, it being a, a, a joke. Kevin, or apologize, but we're gonna have to find another host. So he ultimately decided to step down. Kevin did not host the Oscars and said recently in 2024 that he would never consider it ever again. Those gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Those just aren't comedy friendly environments anymore. Many people like Kevin believe that comedy is under a microscope these days, but it isn't even just everyday people online that get offended. Sometimes it's the A-list stars who, even though they are in the entertainment industry themselves, get offended. Like Chat. I've noticed that Tom- Chat, true, but if you're skilled, guys, if you're a skilled comedian and you you are funny and you do your research and you're good at it okay you can make you can make these jokes fly off and people people laugh and they move on immediately as long as you don't make it like weird you're chilling it i think a lot of people like complain that oh dude comedy like this because they're just not funny they're just not good at their job Hanks That's always my has on a it. sour look on his face. Anyone in the audience not laughing is terrified of being next. One A-lister who did not like being the butt of the joke was Jada Pinkett Smith, and her husband's reaction stamped one of the craziest <laughs> award show Will Smith's of husband. all time. During the <laughs> 2022 lost. Oscars, Chris Rock was presenting the award for Best Documentary Feature. Naturally, he opened with some jokes. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win! <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins, like, please! Everything was going great, until he transitioned to a joke about Jada Pinkett. Now, Chris had a joke during the 2016 Oscars about Jada that the crowd loved. Jada's going to boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited! Ironically, this joke was way harsher than the one he was about to deliver. Chris made a joke about Jada, who has spoken openly about having alopecia. I, I get it. Chris but... compared Jada to Lieutenant Jordan O'Neill, the star of G.I. Jane, notorious <laughs> for her short, buzz cut hairstyle. Based on Jada's expression, she did not like the joke. Will, on the other hand, was laughing. It's unclear if he was trying to mask his anger by laughing, or if he genuinely thought the joke was funny. But then the camera cuts back to Chris, and we can see Will storming the stage until he ultimately smacks Chris in the face. He sits back in his seat and yells at Chris, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. 
The deafening silence in the room permeated when the audience realized this was not scripted, and Chris tried to make sense of what just happened. This encounter made comedians hate award shows even more because Will faced zero repercussions for his actions. He was not kicked out, he was not spoken to by the show organizers. In fact, he won his first Oscar for Best Actor later on in the evening. He gave a five minute speech rambling and crying about how God is calling him to love people and to protect people. He received a standing ovation with Hollywood actors crying in support of him. The standing ovation made me realize how detached Hollywood guys, is from real. Guys, in, guys, I don't want to defend each other. In their defense though, I'm sure that the audience didn't know it wasn't scripted or a joke for the show or something like that. Guys, guys, even for a while, if people were, even the audience, people were just like, eh, they didn't know if it was scripted or part of it. Like it's, guys, during the show, it happens on a moment, like they don't really know, you know? It's more the job of the people that are behind the scenes to be like, yo, this is fucking stupid. Reality. The slap incident is likely why we got the extremely safe and not edgy Jimmy Kimmel to host the awards for the next two years. And they were about as funny as you could imagine. Christopher uh. is joined by his longtime collaborator, Killian Murphy, who is just wonderful. Killian is... Oh, man. It's a fact about his name. It's pronounced Killian when he does drama. When he does comedy, it's silly Ann. Actually, I take that back. The reason why we'll never get a good oh, comedian to man. host an award show again Jesus. is not because of Will Smith. It's because of- Guys, I don't ever make a joke out of whatever. This guy, come on. Ricky Gervais, who unleashed an onslaught of savage roasts and jokes towards the guests, sponsors, and even the networks who host these events. Ricky exposed Hollywood so badly at the 2020 Golden Globes that no organizer will dare set themselves up to get decimated like that again. Ricky Gervais is a British comedian who is known to push the boundaries with extremely edgy material. Politics, social issues, race, religion, there is absolutely nothing Ricky won't joke about. If people thought that Kevin Hart's material pushed the boundaries, Ricky makes Kevin look like a comedian for children. So how he was able to host the Golden Globes five times is pretty insane. The first time he hosted was in 2010, and yes, he was still a savage back then. As soon as he stepped on stage, he started attacking Steve Carell. You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's play. If you don't know, Ricky Gervais created a British Funny. comedy show called The Office in 2001, four years before the American version. Ricky's show only lasted one season, but is filmed the exact same way. No music, long awkward pauses, deadpan humor, semi-realistic but also extremely unrelatable chaos in the work environment. The premise of the show is the exact same, and only diehard fans of the American version would argue how it's different. Ricky, like the savage he is, goes on to promote his version of the show, as well as roasting the network host the event. Or if you think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit, then um, watch the original, Fridays, on Adult Swim. <laughs> or get the box set, that's still available. So um, go and get that. Um, I will be making the most of this opportunity. I'm not used to these sort of viewing figures. <laughs> Let's face it, nor is NBC. So, he then goes on to belittle actors' value to the world. Notice how they almost clap for themselves. It is an honor to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. <laughs> actors. They're just, they're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if I ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. <laughs> He'd be all over the place. We'd go, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know? Hugh Laurie did not like that joke. Another celebrity not very fond of Ricky's jokes was Mel Gibson. Mel has struggled with alcoholism since he was 13 years old. He is also he is known in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. In 2006, he got arrested for a DUI and then proceeded to blame Jews for all the wars around the world before threatening the police officer. So Ricky had to take a jab. I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean, it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said, it's... <laughs> Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. <laughs> Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. <laughs> 
Ricky's comments throughout the night felt distasteful to many around the world, but numbers don't lie, <laughs> I mean, that's and he drove funny. NBC's ratings through the roof. The 67th annual Golden Globe Awards presents NBC with its biggest non-sports viewership in the slot in six years. The Golden Globe Awards gains 12% in adults 18-49 and 14% in total viewers versus last year's telecast. So he was invited back again the next year. Also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, well, what? Why well, don't get it? My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. Ricky set the tone for the night that 2011 would be even crazier than 2010, immediately Tom attacking the nominees, Tom specifically is gay? The Tourist, which was a 2010 film led by Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie that was nominated for Best Motion Picture. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron, Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Boy, it was a good Who movie. Has. Um, but no. The Tourist was Wait, notoriously I enjoyed the a movie. terrible movie, and many wondered why it was nominated in the first place. Well, if you understand how Golden Globes are chosen, it might make a bit more sense. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a voting body of about 90 journalists that determine who gets nominated and wins the trophy. To get into the HFPA, you must write for a foreign publication but live in Los Angeles. It's no secret that members of the HFPA like to use their status to mingle with celebrities. Ooh. It's like if I had a real vote on who wins a Grammy and I started hitting up rappers to have dinner with me. They might entertain it because theoretically I could help them win an award. So you will notice Ricky often says the Hollywood foreign press is corrupt. It must be good because it's nominated, so shut up, okay? <laughs> and I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor going around that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood foreign press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... Ricky also had to take more shots at Mel Gibson. Our first presenter... Yeah, it's a little far out of ...talented and Jewish, apparently. <laughs> Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. And of course, he had to dig into Steve Carell some more. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell! It's important to know that Ricky doesn't actually have hard feelings for Steve. They are both in on the joke and love to play up the bit. It's oh, funny, okay, he always makes fun of me, always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like, before one of these award shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. He's, he's such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, just well, to no, warn you. But if, uh, I told him what I was going to say. You know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. Some people just don't like the idea of a person yeah, no, being but... the butt of someone's joke. So they definitely wouldn't like this stray that Sandra Bullock caught at the end of the night. I the like Sandra. The is a national treasure. Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Brother. Surely, after these attacks, he wouldn't be brought back to host the 2012 awards. After all, the Hollywood Foreign Press did not want him back, with one member stating, My worry was that he was insulting, and when I invite someone to my house, they don't insult me. But this is show business. I oh, guess I'm old-fashioned. No. But NBC was strongly in favor Do of Gervais not. returning because the ratings were just as good as they were last year, with 17 million live viewers for the entire show. So they decided to bring him back for a 
third year, and he was as unhinged as ever, opening with lines that proved he could care less about this special evening. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. <laughs> so, is it it's four? It's four. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. The first presenter he brought Jesus. up was Johnny Depp, and he called back to his previous joke last year about his movie, The Tourist. Have you... Ready? I, I guess oh, so. no. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> Have you? Uh, he does all his movies, doesn't he? Uh, no. The lead actor of a movie that was nominated for a Golden Globe, admitting that he didn't even watch his own movie the following year, says just about everything you need to know about the value of these awards. Celebrities, like Elton John, have had enough of Ricky's mm. nonsense. Even Ricky wrote on his blog after the event, I've told my agent to never let me be persuaded to do it again. But then 2016 came around and Gervais was made an offer he couldn't refuse. He tweeted, I'm making a list, I'm checking- Chad, Chad, you're all missing some lore, and he's the guy making video is also missing the lore. He said it in a court case that he doesn't watch his own movies, which makes a lot of sense, like watching your own VODs. I think it makes sense. It twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Hashtag Golden Globes. Ricky genuinely believed he would never be back, so he made the 2016 Golden Globes his most diabolical performance ever. Shush. I want my own VODs. Shut up. You... Disgusting, pill popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding. Ricky kept reassuring everyone in the crowd he would be nice this evening. He was lying. <laughs> I am going to be nice tonight, and I'll tell you why. The president of the Hollywood Foreign Press just told me that if I say anything offensive or crass or resort to innuendo, he is going to come out here and personally pull me off. So that's an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is the level. An old man pulling me off. And then again insinuated that this award show is corrupt. One Hollywood publication said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away from the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Everyone is clapping and laughing because they know it's true. Ricky continued to just minimize and bash the award show every which way he could. All female remakes are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. There's going to be a female remake of Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios because they get guaranteed box office results and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... Double whammy! Up, I don't care. If you do win tonight, remember he no one it. cares about that award as much as you do, okay? <laughs> Don't get emotional, it's embarrassing, okay? That award is, no offence, worthless. <laughs> it's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists <laughs> wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Honestly, there is nothing more I can say to add to this. Eva Longoria and America Ferreira aren't just beautiful, talented actresses. They are also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. <laughs> But I'm sure you can tell the energy of this show feels different than previous years. The first three shows he hosted, he was more playful, often chuckling to himself devilishly. But this show, he seems more fed up and actually just trying to be blunt. Oh, this show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too, this could be half an hour. Okay, let's get through it. Right, unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen, it doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. And for some reason, the producers decided it would be a good idea for Ricky to introduce Mel Gibson, who he had previously attacked multiple times, and this time would be no different. Listen. I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, okay? 
And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mal blames, we know who Mal blames. Oh, Jesus. And, and then he drinks them. all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. No. I want to say something nice about Mal before he comes out. Um, so, oh yeah, okay, here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. Please, Malcolm, Mal Gibson. So I'm guessing that the Bill Cosby thing was more fresh at the time. The night concludes, celebrities are angry, the Hollywood Foreign Press is angry, Mel Gibson is angry, Ricky Gervais is never coming back. Until 2020, where they asked him to host for the fifth time. People were shocked. Ricky was shocked. And if we thought his 2016 show was direct and less playful, 2020 felt like he did not tell one joke, but rather just statements of how much he hates Hollywood. You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so... I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. <laughs> he immediately set the stage that he would go out with a bang, and timbers were shivered. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Ronan Farrow is the son of Woody Allen, who became a journalist and led the charge in exposing Harvey Weinstein for his decades of sex crimes inside the film industry. Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Jesus, dude. Do you like to make your own way here? Holy! Own here. Right. Tom Hanks didn't like that one. Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist, so... It baffles me how most of Ricky's harshest roasts since 2010 were towards the organisers of the event, and they still hired him five times. But the ending of his monologue was not a joke. So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f*** off, OK? His wit and his charm we saw in previous years was no longer present. He had used it all up. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box. A movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. Jeez. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut the f*** up. Fans absolutely loved Ricky's direct attacks on the privilege. Dude, these are pretty far out, These harsh the jokes are likely the most adversity they had to face all year. Classically, journalists hated his performance. Rolling Stone said, The host's shtick at the 2020 Golden Globes felt incredibly stale. Salon said, Why the Golden Globes and host Ricky Gervais felt particularly pointless. Variety said, But most of the time, his stand-up seemed lazy. Which is true. It was kind of lazy, because it didn't seem like he was joking. But hey, if these celebrities are going to congratulate Dude, themselves the over a time. dozen times per year with superficial awards and trophies, then they need a comedian to humble them. But I think we can all agree that the real winners of these events are the fans, who get to laugh and reminisce on the comedic chaos that ensued at the expense of multi-millionaires. Chat, I thought it being Comed lazy was the whole point of it. Is that like, oh, it's like last time hosting the show type thing? Like, oh, you actually really want me on? Okay, sure, I'll send it to you. Like, uh, and then he just trolls it, you know? Because I cannot activate Windows. Because it's already activated. 